well, it's 2020 now, so back in 1935, 1924, 1924, my grandpa was born. It's good old days back then. But then my grandpa, he, he broke his leg when he was 16 years old. That would be 1940. Right then, sweeping measures came in that were scaring Canadians into thinking that the Japanese were somehow aliens, they called them. But no, we weren't enemy aliens. We were just, you know, good people trying to make a living out in BC. So they shipped my grandpa off, broken leg and all, to Manitoba set him down in Dominion City in the heart of the icy prairies lived in a tin shack as far as I recall and they survived but the government took all of their property and possessions and sold them and kept the proceeds so you know that was a scam they told the Canadians that this was a major risk here to have the Japanese people so they could take all of our things. That's not right. But you know, it seemed like the emphasis was kind of on blending in back then, you know, just trying to live amongst all these European settlers. And So we lost our language, that's one thing we... Well, my grandma speaks a bit of Japanese. She speaks pretty good Japanese. She's... my grandma is 86 this year. 86. Born in 1935. Uh, she's... Uh, yeah. She, she speaks Japanese. And, um... This is a newspaper article from 1954. Mm -hmm. It says the Times Journal. Maybe, maybe that's from Fort William, but it, I'll just read it to you. T. Nishikawa, former hotel owner, dies. Born in Japan, the late Mr. Nishikawa came to Canada and he and his wife settled in Vancouver, where he was active in his early years as a cabinet maker. He owned and operated a hotel in the West Coast City for 15 years. So, oh, Grandpa, when he was going to school. 1921. So, let's see. He was born in 1910. This must be him when he's like 11. <laughs> and he was born in Vancouver. And he looks like he's quite well to do. He's wearing a suit and he's 11. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to that obituary, um, he describes his father as being a hotel owner, but I understood them as being boarding house uh, proprietors, like providing housing for people immigrating to Canada. Do you yeah, there's a, there's a house, two houses there. There was two houses there. And then rows of homes. <laughs> Oh, yes. You Behind had, it. Oh, I remember that. Good for yeah, you. I remember the picture. <laughs> you had a house. You had a couple boarding houses in your family. And um, Grandpa, at that time, uh, your father was a supervisor at a lumber mill. And uh, that was your situation prior to the war. We shipped a whole bunch of refugees on the train together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember the train ride. You remember the train ride? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We thought, what was well, that like? Yeah. 
Well, it was just my grandparents, so they, you know, I sort of enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was very close to them. Yeah. More than my parents. Yeah. No, he was in a men's camp, eh? Cause they couldn't go to war because it's Japan, eh? That's why they put him in a camp. Mm. Do you remember if he was that far away? Yeah. You can't go there. We, I never went there. He must have visited it, though, because yeah. he took fa photographs. Yeah, that could have had a, an impact on his relationship with his children. How many years was that for? Hmm? That how, do you remember how many years that was for, that your dad was separated? Yeah, during the war. How, how long the war well, was. Great, well, you Four say... Time grade one or two to grade seven, being in Lemon Creek, the internment camp. But Fred was sent to Angler, which was a POW camp in Ontario. Yeah, he visited, but we couldn't go yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember how often he visited? No, not too often. No. He was like a stranger because you don't know him. <laughs> yeah. And the young males at the time were separated from their families, and I think they were perceived as like a political threat. And especially, you know, um, Fred and his uh, peers, they were very literate, they were bilingual. They were English speaking and they were very um, offended to be treated in this way after you know being born and raised in British Columbia in the school system and uh, yeah they, they, they knew their rights were violated. In 2019, I brought my son to Lemon Creek. Dorothy and her siblings really had a deep respect for Kimye because she had to look after the family when Fred was in the POW camp. And not only was she looking after her children, she was looking after her um, in-laws, like Fred's parents, and they were getting elderly. And um, I remember Dorothy saying that she had a really close relationship with uh, her grandparents and she would take them uh, to the communal uh, bathing areas because they set up like you know like traditional onsens in lemon creek for bathing and uh, she would take her grandpa there <laughs> <laughs> Public bathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's something about the Japanese culture is this like unashamed acceptance of the human body. It's, it's like a very natural, a natural thing. And 